Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Hood Rap Podcast. This is your boy, the Variant Hood, still here in New York in the Big Apple here at Times Square. And the next interview I have for you guys for New York Comic Con is with Sandy King. Sandy King has worked on um, films with John Hughes and uh, Michael Mann. She's also worked on uh, films with John Carpenter, one of my favorite uh, movies, vampire movies of all time, called Vampires with James Wood. We talked a little bit about this. But she has a story career in Hollywood. She also runs Storm Comics, and they make awesome horror comics. So uh, check this interview out. She's very nice. Give her applause, Miss Sandy King. Welcome back to the Hood Rap Podcast, and I have Miss Sandy King here with me over at New York Comic Con. Um, Miss King has had an extraordinary career. She started painting shoes for rock stars and movie stars to also working on the set of Star Wars. Y'all didn't know that, huh? I wasn't on the set. I was in animation. Animation? Designing spaceships. But we're going to get back, we're, we'll get, I, I got questions for you on those because I am a big Star Wars fan, but I'm also a big comic fan and horror fan as well. So this is kind of a great mix for me and my audience. Um, welcome, uh, Miss Sandy King. Miss King, um, tell me a little bit about, um, about Storm King Comics. Well, we were found, this is our 10th anniversary. Uh, we started with a, a project called Asylum. Uh-huh. And that was one that uh, Thomas Ian Griffith and John and I created together. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we just kind of thought it was a one-shot deal at a certain point. And, um, you know, we spent two years learning the business and the art of comic books. Uh You know, it's... You take it for granted because you've read comic books forever. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean you know the art and how to, how to make it. Yeah. We're writers, mm-hmm. but it's a different writing form to do scripts. Mm-hmm. And um, so we spent two years, put it out, and um, we won some awards, and people liked it. Mm-hmm. And so that made me grow fangs. Oh, we awesome. Go, well, this is fun. <laughs> and it wasn't very different from animation, which I'd worked in before, uh-huh. in terms of layers and understanding how to put that together. Uh-huh. And the teamwork that we brought from movies works in comics. Okay. So um, we stayed. Awesome. And now we're, you know, we have over 100 comics. I could see. And um, I think we're up to 37 or 38 graphic novels. Mm-hmm. And uh, box sets and all kinds of things mm-hmm. because we like this world. When did you start? When did when did you start the company? When did when did your first comic book come Ten out? Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Yeah. So you guys have been doing it for a while now. Yeah. So like yeah, we're here to stay. But I mean, the comic book, the comic book writing and business started with you for ten years ago. But you were a script writer on John Hughes' um, Sixteen Candles. You worked with no, as a script supervisor. The script supervisor for jo- for John Hughes on Sixteen Candles. You worked with Michael Mann, and um, then you, I mean, you, you were a producer for one of my favorite like vampire movies ever, va- vampires. You yeah. Know? Um, so um, you have all that experience. How does that experience translate into uh, running uh, comic, uh, comic business and also um, writing comics? It's, it's, except for adapting to a new art form because it's a different platform, mm-hmm. um, it's the same. I mean, these are organizational skills. Mm-hmm. And I do run Storm King Comics differently than most most other comic mm-hmm. companies are run, in that I bring movie production uh, mindset to it. Mm-hmm. Where in a lot of major companies, they don't bring the writer and artist together and letter it together and stuff. That's all run through an editor. Uh-huh. I make everybody deal with each other from the very okay. get go. Like teamwork. Yeah, it's teamwork. Mm-hmm. And I find the more communication there is, the better the book is. Mm-hmm. The more team spirit there is, the more the end product reflects what we all originally wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And w- when people are proofing the comic, there's like five sets of eyes on it. Mm-hmm. So I find that 
bringing that different mindset um, down to payroll that's you're paid within a week of turning in your vouchers, mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. like that, which I find doesn't happen. Because I heard, the yeah, I heard like with artist deadlines are hard, right? Artist deadlines are really hard. Mm-hmm. So I just, now we don't put it up for uh, consideration for the catalogs and mm-hmm. stuff until I get everything in. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm pulling my hair out every issue. <laughs> so when, when you guys first started, um, you know, Storm King comic, Comics 10 years ago, did you work with uh, anybody in the comic business, like icons to help you? To, you know, tutor oh, you to through it. I was dependent. Are you kidding? Um, there were such generous people. The, the person who started out writing Asylum mm-hmm. was Bruce Jones. Wow. Um, and I learned from editing him mm-hmm. uh, how, how to write comics as mm-hmm. opposed to scripts. Mm-hmm. Because he would... Um, I would read it. I read an issue, and I go, "Wow, this is great!" And then I kind of go along and go, "Wait a minute, he's not writing what our IP is." <laughs> and I try and figure out how did he sell me every issue mm-hmm. on something that wasn't the direction of, of what we were looking for. Uh-huh. And because he's masterful, and so I have to go back in and go, "All right." What are these hooks? How does he get me involved? Mm-hmm. And it was the best education I could ever have gotten. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a very generous man, very generous with his knowledge. Um, you know, in the, in the artists, I had Tim Bradstreet on. I had Leonardo Manco on. Mm-hmm. I had really uh, fabulous people. Jimmy Palmiotti. I heard about that. He yeah. was terrific. He's a nice guy. I interviewed him before. He's a he's he's a sweetheart. One of the best. And he would come and sit in my booth and go, "Where's your name?" <laughs> really? He yeah. would. T- he go, "I don't see your name anywhere." You know? <laughs> 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 got to put your fucking name up. <laughs> and um, now you got your name right there. Yeah, but that's because of Jimmy. Yeah. He that's said awesome. they want to they, they want to be part of your club. And he explained to me what the comics community was like. Mm-hmm. You know, that they want to know your name, see your mm-hmm. face. They want to be part of your clubhouse. Yep. I went, really? Because as a film producer, I'm used to being invisible. Mm-hmm. And so that was hard for me. It was hard for me to go uh, pose with a crystal ball or mm-hmm. another picture, you know, with dragons and stuff like that. I had to become that persona. And a comic community is such a, it's a pretty small community. So everybody kind of knows each other. You know, like even yeah. e- even as like a person that reads comics and collects comics, I, you know, I could tell if they, if they have Instagram name and they're on my YouTube channel and the live chat, I could tell you their first name and where they're from. It's that it's that small of a community, you know. I had to learn that about yeah. the community. That was part of my biggest learning curve was to be out in front mm-hmm. and have my face show things that I don't do in movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to do it a little more now in movies because that culture's changed. Yeah. That's um, a big community, a movie community, huh? Yeah, or, 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 uh, but it's, yeah. it's funny, you know, it's the Instagram world. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not comfortable with it, that. It's an Instagram do. world. It is. Yeah. Instagram and X, whatever they want to call it now. And oh, screw him. Well, and, you know, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to be told what to think. <laughs> and... Um, and I don't also don't like the tracking. Yeah, me either. You know, this is all not part of me, and mm-hmm. I, I don't want personal information out there. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm fine being comic books, movies, those mm-hmm. kinds of things. Um, the rest of it, mm-hmm. no. No. Uh, I mean, what am I supposed to do? Just post cat pictures? <laughs> since we're since we're segueing into the movie section and everything else, I want I was I just I just was. To, uh, I was just educated that you designed shoes and art Fred for Slayton's. yeah for like movie for like rock stars and movie stars in the, yeah, in your David beginning. Bowie's wife wow! And, and um, there was this this shoe store, Fred Slayton's in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and that was the era of the big platform shoes and boots and things. And so to support myself, I was doing uh, really low budget movies. Mm-hmm. And um, animation, I was working as an inker, and um, I would pay 
these platform shoes mm -hmm. for um, uh, for the Prince and Hooker's Ball <laughs> uh, and for uh, uh, you know Barbie Benton and um, you know various uh, and like I said David Bowie's wife mm -hmm. anything they wanted. I would paint the platforms. That's awesome. And you, you majored in art at UCLA, right? Yeah. Um, and then um, once you graduated high school, I mean college, if I say college, yeah. you, you started doing these small indie films and painting the, the boots and shoes and everything. And I did anything to pay my rent. Yeah? Well, not anything. Art. Art <laughs> movies. And, um, you know, my first movie uh, was an AFI film. Well, I helped... The art department and the film department were right next door to each other in UCLA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So most of my friends were over in the film department. Mm -hmm. So I would do stuff for their movies. Oh, awesome. And then um, every once in a while there were AFI films uh -huh. looking for crew members and stuff. And I had a choice on my first AFI film of continuity <laughs> or catering. Uh -huh. Oh. And no. I thought... Well, I can cook or I can do continuity, <laughs> but I knew from animation uh, and from photography a lot about lenses, screen direction, that kind uh -huh. of stuff. So I wound up being a script supervisor and doing continuity for the whole first part of my career. What is a, what is, what is a script supervisor? A script supervisor literally holds the book, um, the script. Mm -hmm. And it's a liaison between production, the shooting crew, and editorial. Mm -hmm. So you have all the notes, all the cutting notes, wardrobe, all of those things you have to do with matching. But the other thing is you're working with the director to keep him in track with what he intended. Mm -hmm. So you're there through pre-production for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And you, you, know, you have the page count, you have the timing of the script, mm -hmm. those notes that go into it. Did you want to do movies when you were at UCLA, or did you just kind of fall into it with no, being in I art? actually wanted to be a, a, a big painter, uh -huh. and then I realized I would starve, so that's when I went to animation. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to be an animator. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a choice to make at a certain point, because I was starting to do uh, live action, and because my friends were all there, mm -hmm. and animation, and... The big, the big deal was to be hired by Disney. Okay. And I got hired by Disney in Story Sketch. And I realized that I was a very shy person mm -hmm. or reclusive. And I would be spending my whole life talking to myself in the dark mm -hmm. <laughs> if I stayed in animation. Mm -hmm. So I pushed myself out into live action. And that's how I wound up there. So... But you, you did mention uh, before, um, you did animation for Star Wars? I did. Was it the, the episode ep four? Or no, no, the original Star Wars. The original, yeah, the original Star Wars. The original Wars, Star, I, the Star Wars. The um, New Hope, right? Uh, it was everybody, every animation student across Southern California, uh -huh. uh, particularly Cal Arts and UCLA. Uh huh. We were all, uh, Dan O'Bannon was coordinating spaceships and, and those kind of wow. and those things. And so, like, Cal Arts was doing um, the lasers for the laser fights. Yeah. The sword fights. Uh huh. And uh, the guys I was working with, uh, Jay Teitzel and uh, Carlos Gutierrez, I think, um, it's been a long time ago. Uh huh. Um, Hey, but you're part of the Star Wars family. That's but that's big. And that's big. That's big for like Star Wars heads like me. Well, they were doing the uh, spaceship designs under mm -hmm. Dan O'Bannon, mm -hmm. and so then because there were only three of us there, that meant I was cruising over with like uh, the only edict was. Um, I remember O'Bannon saying, "When they made Buck Rogers, no one had any idea of what a spaceship looked like." Mm -hmm. So now pretend there's no idea what the next generation of spaceships will look mm -hmm. like. And that's where the X-Wing fighter, the X -wing. ping pong ball looking things, yeah. all of that came from. Where the minds, and I have to say, basically Jay Tyson's mind. Uh -huh. But we would sit there and basically brainstorm. Mm -hmm. But it was those guys who really were 
doing most of the work and I worked with them. Was a v- I worked under them. I heard the vibe was like really cool working in those those first those first episodes back in the seventies, right? Well, you know, then it became Skywalker Ranch and those guys were up there. Yep. And they were all incredible and that whole ranch was incredible. Mm-hmm. Because we wound up working with them then on uh, John and I on subsequent movies. Uh-huh. But in terms of my involvement with Star Wars, I was just lucky enough to be working with uh, Lewis. Lewis and Carlos and Jay, uh-huh. who I was working with. Mm-hmm. So I was a, a peripheral, very peripheral, but you know, everybody was talking to everybody because mm-hmm. the lasers were going on over at Cal Arts, and so everybody was doing animation with mm-hmm. each other because we're all in LA. Yeah, so running back to like you being a script supervisor, mm-hmm. one of my favorite like horror movies of all time is vampires like oh, back in you. 1998 mm-hmm. did you produce that you produced that right yes so but did you do any script supervising for that at all or anything no the only time i now do script supervising as uh on the films i produce mm-hmm. is when we break off in second year. okay um then i'll do a whole book yeah. but um outside of that now it just grew bigger and bigger where uh, some of the movies, you know, we had a regular script supervisor. So for producing, so I'm not, a, I'm not in the movie industry, so, uh-huh. so producing, what I've seen is like you, get every, you try to get everything, funds and materials for the directors and everybody else so that they can create, right? Is that? Yeah, I mean, it, it involves making the deals that fund the movie, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, finding the studio that wants to make it. Um, putting the crews together and stuff, working with the, the whole financial team. The uh, I've always been the line producer at the same time as producing. Mm-hmm. Um, though that changes now, say, on Suburban Screams, the TV show, because mm-hmm. um, that's a whole different network setup. But uh, so it involves the finances, Working with the unit manager, uh, with the crew hiring, you know, deciding who the caterer is. Mm-hmm. Oh, logistics of all the logistics. So, but let me let's talk. Uh, I want to talk more about vampires because I, I love yeah, that movie. Sure. So, um, I watched that movie back in 1998. I think it was at Grand Lake Theater in Oakland. So I I remember I saw it, it was, because you know why. I love James Wood in that movie. You know, like yeah. James Wood has always been like a character actor that plays kind of like a prick. You know, but in this one, he was like he the anti-hero hero. hero. Like yeah. he was like a Deadpool. You know, like he was a. I, I thought, why isn't he playing leads like this? Why was this the last lead he ever played? Then I heard some stories about James on set and everything. Can you, in your best way, give us like a fun story about James Wood on on the set of Vampires? Well, you know, we're all stuck out in the desert for huh? months, and. Um, you know, Tim Guinea mm-hmm. played Father Adam. Yeah. You know, loved to tor- torment Jimmy. And because Jimmy would try and be very... Uh, he can try and rule other people. And Guinea refused to be intimidated. Mm-hmm. So he would go up and tickle him, jump on his back, um, do all those kinds of things. And Jimmy would try and get even during yeah. their couple of fight scenes and things like that. <laughs> it never worked. Um, so, you know, you wind up with interesting family dynamics sometimes. Mm-hmm. I, I heard, like, because I, I, I asked you if you're a script super, supervisor because, I mean, from what I heard is, like, yeah, um, uh, Jimmy would, would like to uh, ad-lib and it would drive people nuts wasn't allowed to, the director's in charge of that yeah and John got out of him what he wanted <laughs> and I th- and I think he he came off really well as no well. he did no once you know it's a matter of of corralling the energy on the screen uh-huh. it, it fit well with um, his character in, in, yeah. in vampires because you know he seemed like the a burned out vampire killer you know like he's just like yeah. I've been through this I've done it like Come and ro- ride with me. And let's no, do it. Listen, he nailed the character. Yeah. 
and um, and John got what he needed out of what would be really disparate personality. How does John do that? How does he like? That's his magic power. <laughs> That's what he does. He knows how to uh, connect with the p- kind of personalities that are able to be chameleons, mm-hmm. and um, and then we cast for people that can bring that veracity to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's that's awesome so another you know another favorite movie of mine that i don't know if um, you, you're probably part of was uh, uh uh big trouble in little china yeah i was part of it i was script supervisor on that i i, I love i love that movie um are we going to see jack burton in the uh and was it what was it called the uh the, the uh pork chop pork, pork chop, chop express, express. Are we ever, are we ever going to see a part two? Because I don't want to see a remake. No one can ever take uh, no, you, you, uh, Kurt Russell's spot. What you want to do would be to, to uh, have you know have Wang Chi or uh, 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 Jack Burton's kid trapped, and you'd mm-hmm. have you'd have to do something going back into Chinatown mm-hmm. where the old guys have to go back and rescue or do yeah. something. Um, you know. No, you don't want to remake what's already been done. But if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you have to bring you have to bring Kurt Russell back in. That's the thing. It's like oh, yeah. there's, you know, yeah. the idea. Of, you know, uh, there've been some good ideas. I think where the smart person would actually. Um, well, I can't give that away. Um, <laughs> but but you know, you do a generational mm-hmm. thing. And you know, you know. Um, so that was that that was like late eighties and then in ninety two I think Mortal Kombat came out. And when I when I first played Mortal Kombat, the video game, I was like, bro, they just they stole all this stuff out of, um, from Big Trouble Little China. You know, like did you guys ever get a piece of that? Because I'm saying like all the movie guys know, um, movies and video games guys know, like, you know, a lot of those characters like straight out of like Big Trouble Little China. We you get know? it. You know? You 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 know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um did you guys ever think about like making your own video game like Big Trouble in Little China? Because that would be dope. You know, with Big Trouble in Little China, that that's owned by Fox. Okay. And so it's like, uh, you know, there's so many rights issues every time you go to do back catalog mm-hmm. that sometimes it's more brain damage than just make up a new story. Mm-hmm. Plus, we've already made that. Yeah. So it's like it's not a new challenge. Yeah. It's more fun to do new things. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you. Let's get into some fun questions. So we are in New York, um, and I want to ask you a fun one. You're from LA. Yeah. I'm from San Diego, so we're, we're Southern California people here right. in this. We're not high rise. In this like high rise, like high-rise crazy place. <laughs> is is would it be if the end of the world was to happen, would it be harder to escape from New York or LA? Oh, much harder here. I know, right? That's, that's what I was thinking, too, yeah, right? Yeah, Oh, man. <laughs> no. And I wouldn't have my dog and cats. And I know. And, 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 well, our kids are all over the place, so... Yeah, I know. Uh, you'd see me trying to crawl back across the United States. <laughs> uh, I would go try to find Kurt and say, Come on, man, you got to show me how to get out. Oh, uh, yeah, you yeah. got to escape with Kurt. With yeah. Kurt. Um, in your spare time in your home, it's quiet out there in, in, in L.A., um, and you and you and you and John are, are sitting back on the couch. What what TV shows and what movies do you guys watch together? Oh wow. Well. Um, we know we were hooked on The Last of Us. Oh, The Last of Us is good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did that, you play the video game? He did. Yeah. I'm not a video gamer. Me either. I can't. I have no hand-eye coordination, and I'm I'm dead before I start. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an enabler, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not the, the one that, that plays. John plays all the time. Um, so, like, things like The Last of Us, um, you know, I watch, he watches basketball. I, I We tend to watch I heard he's a I heard he's a Bucks and Warrior fan. I'm a Warrior fan. I grew up in the Bay Area. Yep. Yeah. He's a Warriors and Bucks fan. What, who, who are you a fan of? Well, see, i got to be true to my school. There you go. Yeah, no matter how dismal it gets. I have love for the Lakers. Fan because we had, you know, home up in the Bay Area. Uh-huh. And so it's like you can't give up the Warriors. I grew up in, I grew up in the Bay Area in, in Oakland, and 
they would always give us free tickets when the Warriors really sucked back in the 90s. Yeah. You know, like, we get free tickets all the time. You can't get a free ticket for, for anything oh, no more. It's like, come on, we were true no Warrior ticket. fans back yeah, then. Yeah. We were, like, <laughs> winning, like, 10 games a, 10 games a season, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, how is the rivalry between you and John? Because you went to UCLA and he went to USC, like, when, when, when that game happens. We try to bait each other, but we don't care that much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question, because, um, you know, again, we're SoCal people here in New York. New York Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con? Quite frankly, I think New York has more spirit. It does, right? Um, I'm not, San Diego has got to get its juice back. Mm -hmm. The publishers have to put out for the fans more and remember that we, that it's a comic Comic Con. Um, this year they couldn't complain about the fact that, oh, it's all about how Hall H and bitch about all the other events because they didn't rise to the occasion to put more energy mm -hmm. into that convention. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm showing up with monsters and they live mass everything else I can do. Mm -hmm. But the whole floor has to dignify the fans. Mm -hmm. And remember why we're there, which is serving back. Yeah. The fans put out a lot of money to attend. They do. And they usually travel from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And their excitement should be served. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what we try to do. And I don't feel like the publishers are putting back out. Mm -hmm. It's now every this is kind of a responsibility for the publishers, not to. I think so. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is our chance to say we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and I agree with you. But the last San Diego Comic Con, I actually think it kind of reverted, reverted back to like what it was supposed to be, because there was no Hall H and there was none of the movie no, star crap. And that and was okay. Yeah, it was good. But the energy was a little low. It was pretty low. The publishers didn't didn't. Uh, do their bit mm -hmm. in wooing back those customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully they will. You know, hopefully they're, yeah. they're watching, you know. Wise up. Yeah, wise up. Um, what are some of your, what are your top three movies that influenced you um, throughout the years? It could be like a movie you even watched yesterday that influences you. Oh, man. Um, I like all kinds of movies. I love The Quiet Man. Uh-huh. I loved, um, uh, the Thin Man. I love uh, taking a Pelham one, two, three. Um, I love the old uh, combination of uh, Hammer Films horror. Mm -hmm. um, you know, X the Unknown, uh, Quatermass Experiment, um, and then. And then Dracula's Daughters and things yeah. like that. But I love the uh, universal classic horror. Uh, me too. You're a big fan of Frankenstein. Giant. Whatever, what, what got me in uh, horror, co horror, you know, the genre was like Elvira in the middle of the night. When I was a kid. Because, you know, like, you know, I'd sneak on the TV and here comes Elvira, you know, super hot girl. And there's this like eight-year-old mm -hmm. kid. And then we did, we'd have like horror stuff. Like, yeah. and you just, you, you know, you watch a horror and wait for Elvira to come back on. But then it kind of got me back into it I too. Just, I just love, you know, Frankenstein, Wolfman, Gillow, uh, and then, you know, you get to Creature from the Black Lagoon, so I mm -hmm. love classic horror. That's awesome. Um, what are your top three songs on your playlist right now? Do you, are, you, are you listening to Taylor Swift right now? Do you, do you, I, like, I, I like a bunch of her Yeah. Stuff, you know, but mostly I love her attitude. It's just, you know, she's charitable. She's smart. Mm -hmm. She's supportive to her crews. So, I mean, what's wrong? Yeah. She's great. No, I, I give her, I mean, she's been doing it for two decades now. You yeah. know? Like, dude, that's, to be, have that longevity and, and stay at that at that yeah. status is, like, unbelievable. Yeah. That's like Madonna stuff. Remember Madonna and, yeah. you know, and, and, like, Janet Jackson, how they kept it up for, like, 20, 30 years, you know, like, 40 sure, why years? Not? Why not? I, w I wish I could do that, yeah. you know? But um, is there any future projects, Miss Miss King, that that, that uh, you have uh, that but you want my audience to know? But you know, we, like I said, we, tonight we have Suburban Screams coming out, mm -hmm. and um, my hope 
is that everybody watches. We get great numbers we get to do a second season. Um, then we have another couple of shows that you know we're waiting for all the strikes to finish um, because they all suspended. And um, I think there's just a lot more projects. And can I be like a fan? Like this is what this is my favorite fan made film. We be like. The vampires, the TV series, and James Woods comes back on as like the, the as a vampire killer, and he's training a younger like younger <laughs> apprentice, you know. And then we have a whole show like we have five think, seasons of that. I don't think Jimmy will ever think <laughs> he <can be> replaced. <laughs> he can never, re- but, but that would be so awesome, right? Like he could be like, uh, you know, that would be so awesome. But but thank you, thank you, Miss uh, Miss King, for coming on the Hood Rat Podcast, and um, good luck with everything. And I, I really appreciate thank it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Miss King.